And our focus this morning is on prophetic intercession. Prophetic what? Intercession. I'll begin with intercession and then we'll get into prophetic intercession. Intercession is the noble enterprise of mediating between the king of glory and his subject. When an individual takes it upon him or herself to mediate between the king of glory and his subject, what is being done is called intercession. There are two main essence of intercession. And one of the essence of intercession is to entreat the king's mercy in order to advert a pending judgment that is due a transgressor. A transgressor is a violator, a lawbreaker. And this earth is governed by laws. Is governed by what? By laws. There's the law of sowing and reaping. If you put a seed in a good soil, whether you are a believer or an unbeliever, it does not matter. The seed will germinate. It's called the law of sowing and reaping. There's the law of gravity. Whatever goes up will, work, will come down. If you jump from a 10-story building, whether you are born again or not, <laughs> you will come. <laughs> you will come down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Except on a very special note of the mercy of God, if you are born again or you decide to spare your life. But you see, there are laws. And once you are prayed by those laws, it does not matter whether you fasted for 40 days and 49th or not, it will work. It will what? It will work. And in like manner, we have been given abilities as humans. They are natural abilities. And those natural abilities will always operate through you every time you engage them the ability for instance to use your hands you don't need to pray and fast for it to work it's a capacity that god has given you the ability to use your brain it will operate every time you engage it as long as you're in health so there are laws guarding the operations on earth and when you become a lawbreaker, a transgressor, there are consequences that follows such engagement. This earth, even though it has been given to the sons of men, still has a judge. In fact, God is not only the judge of the earth, he is the Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus called him so, the Lord of heaven and earth. And he's also the judge of the whole earth. So if an individual breaks the law, he would have to suffer the consequences of being judged and condemned. But God has put a noble enterprise in place that permits an individual who meets the requirement of God to mediate between the judge of the earth and the impending judgment that is due to a transgressor in order to avert that judgment and looking at scripture we see a clear picture of this ministry of an intercessor 
excellently portrayed for us in the book of Genesis chapter 18 in the person of Abraham the friend of God after God had visited Abraham and his wife were cautiously entertained by them and God ministered to their needs at the end of that encounter God said as they went on the way when Abraham went to lead them on the way to escort he said to Abraham he said shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing seeing that Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation and all the earth shall be what blessed by him he said for I have known him in order that we will command his children after him to know the Lord because he says I am the Lord that has acute righteousness and justice on the earth now God went on and then he said the earth cry against Sodom as what has come up therefore I want to go and ascertain if they've done all together as this report that has come to me as the sin they have committed you know the, the recommendation of judgment is not administered by God without proper proof and ascertainment of the sin in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah they are judgment did not actually begin in Genesis chapter 18 do you understand that God has made a judgment before in Genesis chapter 14 when they rebelled against King Chadalahoma and the Bible says these four kings came and fought against uh, the five kings including the king of Sodom and Gomorrah and went with the possession and people of Sodom and Gomorrah at the end of that battle as early as Genesis chapter 13 a report was already captured of the wickedness and sinfulness of Sodom the Bible says in Genesis 13 verse 13 he says after Lot went to be with the people of Sodom he says that in Genesis 13 verse 13 he says that the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful before God so their sin and wickedness have begun to pile up even as early as Genesis chapter 13 and so the land vomited them in Genesis chapter 14 and Abraham went fought with those four kings rescued the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and their provision and returned them back to the place I believe that he had interceded before he went on that war seeking God for mercy and God permitted that mercy be granted so the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were restored back so this is not the first time that Abraham will be interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah because of Lot so God brought the matter again this time and said they are seen you know as has come up I'd like to read Genesis chapter 19 Genesis chapter 18 verse 20 says and the Lord said because the heart cry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great you see the heart cry against them has become what great he says and because their sin is very grave in Genesis 13 verse 13 he says their wickedness was exceedingly great their sin and wickedness was exceedingly great but now it has become what grave I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me and if not I will know and the two men that came with God 
who presented themselves as angels in Sodom when they went there and lots accommodated them went on their journey and then Abraham came near and began to intercede and asked God will you destroy the righteous with the wicked and continued in that intercession pleading if God perhaps would see 50 persons there 50 righteous men and spared land God eventually agreed that if he would see 10 righteous men there he would spare the land Abraham kept saying shall not the judge of all the earth do right far be that you would destroy the righteous with the wicked and then he said even though I'm bad dust, I've taken it upon myself to speak with the Lord. If you look at the terminologies that Abraham used, you will see a man who presented himself as an intercessor. Pleading with God and mediating. If perhaps he could advert the pending judgment that was due to the transgressor in, Ed in Sodom and Gomorrah. And when God conceded that if he found 10 persons, he would spare the city. Abraham relaxed, thinking that, of course, Lot and his family, that's four. By now, the two daughters should be married, so they'll be married to a godly family. Three years as the father, mother, and the son that Lord's daughter will marry, then the other three years, God will find ten. But when God got there, he found how many? Four. And so, because Sodom and Gomorrah at first, before now, be judged, and God judged them by the blows of men. You know, the king of uh, King Chadalahoma came and fought against them, took them away. Abraham came, interceded, restored them. So they were judged by the blows of men. Men are not just caught down immediately. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, it says, He who often is rebuked and hardening his neck shall suddenly be destroyed without remedy. So God does not just quickly cut men down, he doesn't. So, but this time, because they have been corrected, they have been judged, they will not turn away from wickedness, judgment came and they were destroyed. But the point I want us to see there is that if God had seen 10 men there, Sodom and Gomorrah would have been preserved by the ministry of an intercessor. So intercession is very important. It's very important. There are different forms of prayer. It's prayer of supplication, prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of forgiveness of sin, or prayer of repentance, and so on and so forth. I won't have the time to look into all of that. But I want you to know that intercession at this point in our life and in our nation is an urgent and imperative enterprise we must understand learn and engage in the act of intercession i've seen individuals who were due for judgment who were already being judged, shown mercy, and restored on the basis of intercession. You see somebody suffering, and God tells you this is why the person is suffering. Let me share, let me share a little story of somebody who was in the world loved a young woman and gave the young woman a love portion 
in a food. But the young woman, being knowledgeable in the demonic, gave him the food instead. Because she had already given him a love portion. So, when he ate the food that he had given the young woman, his heart began to feel as though it wants to pull out. And he began to lose his mental balance. So when he came to see me, he said he would do anything to be restored. He would do, in fact, he was offering to buy things in the church. He said, no, 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 it's not needed. What you need is the mercy of God. And the Lord began to unveil what he had done. So when he confessed and acknowledged it, you know, I told him, I said, the girl also had given you a love portion before now. So, but when we interceded and asked for mercy, God restored him. And even in cases where people have at the point of even dying, sometimes some cases are redeemable. That's generally speaking. It's possible for a man who has been appointed for judgment through intercession to receive mercy and be delivered from that judgment. But that's not our focus this morning. So let's progress. The second important essence of this noble enterprise called intercession apart from entreating the king's mercy so as to avert the pending judgment due a transgressor the second essence of intercession is a plea for the king's help and favor in order to approve a request or meet needs so when we come to intercede it is not only to stay the hand of God's judgment we also intercede so that as we cry out as a plea to the Lord of the whole earth the judge of the whole earth he would permit by his help and favor that certain requests be approved or certain needs be met a classic example of this is a story of esther you remember esther who was distinguished by favor now esther was an intercessor she was not only a queen she was an intercessor I believe that the, the record of her three days fast was not the first time she was engaging in such noble enterprise. You can't just wake up one morning and say, well, let the people in Shushan, the Jews, fast for me. I also and my maids will fast and I will approach the king, which is contrary to the law. If I perish, I perish. Three days and three nights, there was no food or water. That kind of fast is very effective for turning the hand of the clock, turning the tide, and even putting an end to the activity of wickedness. And, it, you know, it is, is very forceful in its effect. Very forceful. So she must have been fasting before now and seen results and testimony for her to know that in this situation what needs to be done is interceding with a three days dry fast and if you look at that story very well our intercession was twofold she interceded to the king of heaven to grant our mercy and favor before the king it was also called a petition 
And not only that, she also went and petitioned or interceded before her husband, the king, King Aeseros, who permitted eventually, because her own intercession, you know, was very robust. She didn't just go there and ask for the king's favor to approve that the request of the annihilation of the Jews be disapproved or be altered. She first went entertained the king, invited him to the wine banquet, and you know, invited him again with Amon, the enemy of the Jews, the following day. And eventually she presented what? A petition. So she was a woman that was full of wisdom. Because by the time her intercession was accepted and her petition was approved, not only were the Jews delivered from the annihilation that was planned, the enemy of the Jews was no more. It was so concocted that when the king came back after he had learned of the the treachery of Amon, and the Bible says Amon was pleading with the queen and lost his balance and fell across on the queen. And the, the king said, will he also assault the queen in my presence? The Bible says when they saw the countenance of his eye, they just covered the face of Amon. And one of the eunuch reported of the gallow he had dogged, and that was the king said hang him there and that was history so even with regards to a nation because the jews are a nation a people intercession can turn back the hand of the clock a nation a posterity a family a people can be preserved or protected by intercession a life that is hanging in the balance between death and life or heaven and earth can be restored by intercession in 2004 that was 14 years ago i think in the month of june my dad was in a coma for days and he was at University of Benin Teaching Hospital in the emergency ward there. Later, he was moved to the intensive care. And we are praying, interceding for him. He remained unconscious, would not open his eyes, his stomach was swollen, was on drip. The only good thing is that he was still breathing. So I remember there was somebody as they brought and placed the person on oxygen next to his bed. The man was gasping for life. And I told the Lord, I said, let me pray for him. And the Lord said, no, he will be gone by tomorrow. And the following day when I came, his bed was empty. It was gone. No, that's not a, it's not a place to shout. The man died. That was what I meant. He died. Praise God. So I kept interceding. And one of those days as I was going to check the result of some of the tests that were carried out, the Lord descended and was walking with me. It's as if I was about to explode. The presence of God came so strong. And he said, son, how are you doing? And I said, Lord, I'm not fine. Because you want to kill my father. And he said, I don't want to kill your father. He's very stubborn. We got talking. I don't want to go into a long discourse. But at the end of that discourse, the Lord said to me, what do you want? And I said, Lord, give him five years more. And he said, it is done. And the presence left. When I came back 
The man who for many days couldn't see, couldn't talk, couldn't do anything, was just there, was restored back to life. In fact, the doctors were amazed because he was perfectly okay, could still use his brain, his body functions were intact, which was impossible. There were no paralysis or anything. And of course, God gave him beyond five years eventually because of his mercy. But that is a testimony that it is possible for you to intercede and even bring a man back from the region of death to life just by committing yourself to mediate between the king of heaven and those who